It's TX Stampin' Sharon. Whoa, what a fun thing to log on and see so many of you joining me live. Let's just make sure everything is good to go. Oh, I always love it when things work. <laughs> oh goodness, hold on. I was in stereo. <laughs> my computer, I had set everything up on my big computer and I started over there. <laughs> okay, everyone is, I was trying to read through um, your comments. I am so excited about tonight. I have worked on this for probably two weeks. I hope that I'm organized, prepared, I am live at 7 p.m. Central on Thursday, March the 25th. I am going to go through what we're calling card hacks, um, card making struggles that you have. As you watch tonight's presentation with me live, I want to encourage you to, because I'm going to try to move through. I have got a ton of stuff, a ton to share with you. So I'm gonna to try to move through. I don't wanna say quickly, but I wanna get it all in, what I have planned to share tonight. As you're watching the replay, if you guys will give me some time, what I wanna do, and I have got everything broken down. Um, a couple of weeks ago, let me, let me back up just a little bit. A couple of weeks ago, I sent out an email to my newsletter um, people, and I said, what card making struggles do you have? Boy, did I get a lot. And so I want to go through as many of those as I can, but I have categorized them. Does it have to do with inspiration? Does it have to do with adhesives? Does it have to do with inks? Does it have to do with stamping? So I have them in categories. And so that's how we're going to go through everything tonight. We're going to go through them by categories. What I want to do, and it may take me a while, I want to go back and watch my video from tonight in the comment section, or not in the comment section, below the video, I want to have those topics broken down and where you can fast forward to. If you're not interested in adhesives, you know everything you need to know about adhesives and all of that, um, then you could maybe move off to the part that is about inspiration. So that's my plan. I hope that it works. <laughs> I, um, like I said, I have worked on this for about two weeks, getting everything organized and ready, and I wanna keep it that way for, on the video itself. Um, I want this to be a video that you can go and um, save so that you go, now Sharon talked about that that night. I'm gonna go back and watch that part on the video because I missed it. So I feel like this is going to be an evergreen type of video for you to um, maybe absorb some of it now and use it again later. I also have a coordinating blog post that a few minutes after I am done with the live, I will make that blog post go live. And that blog post is going to be extremely valuable because it has a lot of information on there that, because I'm gonna give you overload tonight. You're gonna go, I can't handle it all. So that blog post is another one that you're gonna wanna refer to. Um, you also wanna go, wanna go to it because I have some downloads over there that I can't do on YouTube, okay? So there we go. Um, I have started, let's make sure, yeah. And don't y'all love my lighting? The sun is coming in and it's setting right against my face. <laughs> okay, so I am seeing that Oh, my, Cheryl says that my blouse looks like the Paper Blossom DSP. Y'all like my blouse again tonight? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do a little bit. I know you're gonna see my finger, I'm sorry. I wanna zoom in just a little bit on this one. Come on, there we go. Okay, all right. I um, have my, my friend Michelle Batson is here to help answer questions, but again, I would lo really love for you to save your questions to the end. Let me get through everything because you might ask a question that I'm gonna cover. So let me get through everything. If you're watching the replay, or even those of you who are on live, if you come up with a question later, 
please write those in the comments after the video is um, on the replay, okay? All right, okay, so I'm hearing that y'all are saying that I'm buffering. I don't see anything on my equipment, so if you're having bad weather, um, just know that this video will stay live on my YouTube channel forever because I want you to use this as an evergreen refer uh, back to type of video, okay? All right, so I'm seeing some, I don't see buffering on my end. So if you're having storms or internet issues, that may be why you're seeing the buffering. So, all right, so let's change cameras. The first thing that I wanna share with you, because it's very important on today's video, move that chair out of the way, is, okay, so this is my YouTube channel. And right now, that may be all you see, except for our chat box going on. Right here, there is a show more. Do y'all see that where my arrow is? Under the show more button is the information to go to my blog, because like I said, I have downloads on there for y'all tonight that you're gonna wanna get, okay? All right, got that out of the way. I'm gonna do one more last push for the Creative 8 Spring Retreat. I also have the link under that show more button. If you have not registered for the retreat that is this Saturday, this is your last reminder. <laughs> your last chance okay so I want to show you my organization do you see this I have a lot of things that I'm going to be sharing tonight but this is how I have organized it so that I can get through everything and help you with your struggles okay so we're gonna move the laptop over just a tad I am turning this over to Michelle she is available if you have any questions Type the at sign and Michelle Batson and she will see your message, okay? Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about as I get all my stuff out is adhesives. That seems to be an issue that you all struggle with. Mainly the seal and the seal plus, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna hang on to that for just a minute. Some of my favorite adhesives to use are the mini glue dots, the tear and tape, dimensionals. These are all additional types of adhesives that can help you. So we're gonna talk about the Seal and the Seal Plus first. Oh, we're also gonna talk about liquid glue, which I think all of you are liquid glue, liquid glue users. Okay, um, so the seal, nope, let's talk about seal, the regular seal. Most of the time when I'm doing a video, you guys will see my silicone mat because this stuff takes some practice. You know, at first when it came out, they said to advance it with your finger. Well, the seal leaves strings. I don't want sticky on my fingers. So I always start it on here and see, you can see the string. And then I will get my um, paper. Let's get it started. And you know, it's it still does the stringing, okay? So once you've got it started, I've got some adhesive here on my cardstock. I know I can come back over here and start it again where that adhesive was, okay? So this was my first one. This is my second one. This helps you get it started. Once you get it started, you can use your um, adhesive that's already on the layer to continue adding adhesive. Same with the Seal Plus. I prefer the Seal Plus because it's not stringy and I don't have to use as much of it. So again, get it started, little bits, okay? This is a stronger adhesive, all right? So, that is the adhesive part, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay this right here just for later, because we're gonna talk about this again. And so I'm just gonna have that sitting there. You guys know that I added that adhesive and it's there. Okay, so let's talk about the liquid glue. 
I hear so many people say, how do you get your liquid glue to um, flow so easily? I have a holder. I think you can purchase these. I think we went through this before a couple of weeks ago. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them on Etsy. This one was made by a friend with a 3D printer. But you could use, um, I used to use a little clear glass. You could use, I think we've talked about a shot glass. Anything that will keep that like that so that when you go to use it, it is ready for you to use, okay? When you're using the adhesive, the liquid glue, a little bit goes a long way. If you squirt that out, it's going to squirt out of your layer and you're gonna have a mess, okay? So, if you get liquid glue on your fingers, what have I told y'all to use? Gonna remind you. Hand sanitizer, we all have it now. It's on everybody's desk, purse, car, whatever. So the hand sanitizer will help get some of that tacky off so you can continue making the rest of your card, okay? All right. Okay, what is next? I think that's it with the adhesives. So now we're gonna talk about cleaning. You guys have questions about cleaning um, some things up. So we're gonna move all this over. So we've already talked about cleaning our hands. Guess what else this is good for? Cleaning your work surface. If I get some adhesive on my work surface, I will take my hand sanitizer and just do that, and then I can rub the adhesive and it comes right off. Okay, so that's cleaning. Okay. I'm trying to see y'all's, this does not work for me. I'm trying to read Barbies. This does not work for me, starting the seal on the mat, very frustrating. Okay, all right, let's go back to that then if that's frustrating to you because another thing using the the seal or seal plus you need to have it more at an angle so at an angle starting it off okay just because this is flat if you lay it flat it's not gonna work it works much better when it's at an angle can y'all see how I have it just almost standing up okay stand up seal let's just rename it all right it needs to be standing up and then it will go Okay, does that help you, Barbie? Okay. Cleaning. Cleaning your stamps. My go-to everyday use is the cheapest washer and dryer that you will ever buy. There is a little sign up here that's like uh, raindrops, and then this is a little sun. I use the Stampin' Mist, which by the way, this is the way that it used to come. Um, but now it comes in a larger bottle with a pump. This used to be the refill bottle, but this is great to clean your classic ink stamps. It's also great to clean your cell phone face cover when it gets makeup on it. Just another little tip for you guys. Okay, so cleaning. The other thing that you can use for cleaning is the chamois. What I find I use the chamois more for is cleaning the stamps that are stuck to my Stamparatus. This has just got water on it. I can pick it up and scrub, and then I store mine just in one of the stamp cases. Now, some of these things that I'm going over, a lot of you know, but I'm telling you, when you look at all of the comments that I got repeatedly, it came up about how to clean. Okay. Cleaning ink off of your hands. Again, hand sanitizer helps get the top part of that, of that ink off so that when you pick up a piece of white cardstock, it's not gonna have your fingertips on it, okay? So this stays on my stamp table all the time. Oh yes, I saw that. It is also great for cleaning your acrylic blocks. Oh yeah, works great. Okay, what's next? Next, we're going to talk about um, colors. Y'all wanted to know about colors. So some of the things you wanted to know is, 
How do I know what colors come in the um, Magnolia Designer Series paper from Stampin' Up? Google is your best friend. Google and Pinterest are the biggest search engines. I Googled, what are the colors in Magnolia Designer Series paper? I didn't even say it right, and it came up, the Magnolia Lane Designer Series paper, what it looks like, and the colors that come in there, okay? A lot of you have old um, Designer Series papers, and you don't know what colors go in there. A lot of you have Designer Series papers, and you don't know the name. I looked up, there's my Google, Retired Designer Series paper Stampin' Up. There they all are. And you go, oh yeah, that's the one I have. Well, that's black and white. Let's pick another one. Um, oh yeah, that's the one I have. You can click on it and find out the name. This is actually called Dashing Along Christmas. And then if you still can't find the colors that way, you're gonna go back to Google. What are the colors in Dashing Along Christmas Stampin' Up? If you'll put Stampin' Up with it, you will find um, what you're looking for. Colors. You wanted to know what colors to choose when you are um, trying to create a project. This download is on my blog post. Y'all remember how to get to my blog post? Give me a few minutes after the live and you will be able to print this off. I highly recommend that you print it on basic white cardstock because it's going to be a truer color. So when you're looking at these, you're gonna go, oh, melon mambo, so saffron, and granny apple green. I'm doing flowers, I want leaves, I want the center of my flowers, and I want my flowers to be pink, okay? So it goes through each of the family colors or the Stampin' Up colors and gives you choices so that you can decide what to use for your project. The question that I got was, you wanted a color wheel. We don't have a color wheel, but I refer to this all the time. I have it in my um, cabinet, and when I'm just stuck on what colors do I wanna use together, this is what I use, okay? The other question y'all had was about designer series papers. You don't know what colors coordinate, okay? So this is the ice cream paper, and I store mine in the 12 by 12 sleeves that I have mentioned before, and I also store the piece of paper that tells me what colors are in that designer series paper. Now, sometimes that label is on just the cellophane that uh, wraps around our um, designer series papers. I will take a pair of scissors and I will cut that and I will stick it on the inside of my um, sleeve because I don't wanna have to go and look and look and look and look, what color is that? Is it, is it, you know, is that pretty in pink? No, is that coral? No, I don't know. So that's how I keep up with my designer series papers and what colors come in there, okay? All right, so we went through colors. What is the other colors? Um, all right, this is a big one. Cutting, measuring, cutting, measuring, label, layers, all of that. Also on my blog post, I created this great big ruler. <laughs> How to measure and create layers for cards, okay? So it tells you, because a lot of you are confused about 1 16th, 1 8th. Very rarely do I ever cut a layer at 1 16th or 5, or 5 16th. I typically use 1 8th, um, 1 4th, 3 8ths, 5 8ths, 7 8ths, or 1 8th, you know, I'll, go, I'll use these bigger numbers. But this tutorial, or this download is on my uh, blog post. So let me show you the rest of what you're gonna get when you download that. Um, I see some of you asking about my um, storage and I'm going to go back to that in just a moment when we get to the organizational part. 
So if you have trouble with layers, you know, there's sometimes we get overwhelmed. So first of all, there are two ways to cut a piece of cardstock. You can cut it in half lengthwise where it's four and a quarter by 11, or you can cut it in half this way where it's five and a half by eight and a half. But then when it comes to adding layers, that's when you start getting confused. So make some templates. I made some templates to show you what I mean. So here is my five and a, four inches by five and a quarter. Let's move this over. And then if I want to layer that, I've got my three and three quarters by five inches. That's usually where I stop. But, so Lillian, I have that tutorial, the color sheets, it will be on my blog in just a few minutes after the live. What if I want another layer? Make yourself one that is a quarter inch smaller, three and a half by four and three quarters. So do y'all see how I'm doing this? Make yourself these templates, and then you can mix and match. You're gonna go, well, let's see, do I want that? That just gives me an eighth of an inch, but I like that for what I'm doing. These templates are very helpful, especially when you're just not sure how, how you want your layers to go. Um, sometimes I will have, let's do this, my three, nope. Let's do this. I will have it smaller, but I want a bigger border, okay? Templates like this, just sacrifice some cardstock. You don't have to do the labels like I did, but I was trying to make it pretty for y'all. Um, you can just make yours and use a Sharpie and then keep these together so that you remember. Remember this, tonight's video is to help you with the struggles that you're having. And after four, after reading about 500 emails, this kind of thing came up over and over and over again. Okay, so talking about cutting, you guys said something about fussy cutting. You struggle with fussy cutting. So I stamped two images from Healing Hugs. Isn't that so pretty? And I'm gonna get my scissors. Um, some of you, some of you struggle with the fact that you're trying to duplicate what a die would do. Okay, you're trying to leave a border, and you're struggling by doing that. Okay, so do y'all see how I'm? I've left a border there, and y'all see where I'm cutting. And I think that's stressing you guys out. You know, if you want to do that, move your paper, not the scissors so much, and just follow the outline of the stamp as best you can. I mean, come on guys, I think you're beating yourself up that you are not doing it as perfect as a die would, okay? I chose a stamp set that doesn't have a die because sometimes we have those. So if you're struggling, that's how you do it. You wanna know how I do it? I follow right on the line. I do not think that you always have to have that look of a die. It's up to you, but hopefully that will help you with the stress you're having. I mean, this was another thing over and over again, I kept hearing from you guys that you're struggling with. So fussy cutting, don't let it stress you out, okay? Use your scissors, use your snips, move the paper while you're cutting, okay? And that goes the same whether you're cutting on the line like I do, right on the outline of the image of the stamp, or if you're trying to give it that border that you're wanting. Another one was, you don't know how to cut banner tails. It stresses you out. Stamping is not supposed to be stressful. I purposely cut this one two inches because I needed a little bit bigger for the video. And 
I want you to do this. I want you to, let's come on down a little bit. So we know that half of two inches is one inch, okay? So maybe come up a little bit. Let's come up an inch because we need to have a big one. I'm gonna do this just with a pencil, okay? So you've got your inch marked. You're gonna come up to that line. Y'all see me? And then you're gonna come in and meet that line. Come in and meet that line. As far as erasing, I prefer to use a white eraser, not the one on the end of the pencil. If I wanna get pencil marks off of something, I just use a regular white eraser that you purchase. Oh, you can, I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. Staples, online, uh, any um, uh, office supply store is what I'm trying to say. Just a, and I use this one all the time. Just It's just a clean um, eraser that will not leave um, any smudges or, you know, sometimes when you use these erasers, they smear it and you're like, oh, that looks worse than when I started. Okay. All right, let's see. What else are you struggling with? I know, you told me that when you score your cardstock, it is cracking. Okay, when you score, so this is my score side. I ran it through my um, paper trimmer and I scored it. If I, I've already broke down the fibers on this side so that's the way I'm going to score it, or I'm gonna fold it, okay? If you try to do it the other way, uh, you cannot see this on the video, sometimes you will see that frayed look, okay? Just flip the card back inside out. Another cheat thing that I do, if I see too much fraying right here, I take my snips and I go along the edge and I clean it up. Okay. All right, let's see. What else are you struggling with? Do I have it in this container? Nope, we're moving to the next container. I really should have taken a picture of all my containers to show you. <laughs> okay, so we got the cutter. Okay, so remember I have that PDF on my blog of how to measure, how to cut, how to do those um, um, what do you call it? Templates, the templates. All right, so we did the banner tails. Okay, a lot of you asked me about coloring with markers and blends. You also asked me about which stamp pads to use. Um, you talked to me about re-inking ink pads. Next week at 7 p.m. Central, I'm going to cover stamp pads because it was just too much to try to do tonight. So all of these things you talked about organizing. You wanted to know about organizing. So I'm going to flip the camera because I think you wanna see my face instead of a piece of paper, right? First of all, you talked about organizing in a small space. I get that. When I first started stamping and, and you start gathering things, you just, you just don't have the room. The first thing I purchased at Walmart was a tall multi-drawer plastic thing that was on rollers and I could put paper in it, I could put adhesive and all that. You're gonna have to figure out what works best for your situation when you're talking about small spaces. The other question you had was, how do you keep your workspace organized and uncluttered? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> There's no way. Because we can have a 12 foot table start out and when we're done, we have three inches by three inches to work with. We pull everything out. But what I prefer to do is if it starts getting crazy, I like to just stop put away some of the stuff that I'm not using because I can't think when it's too chaotic, when it's too um, disorganized. Um, another thing you wanted to know is, 
how do you store your ink pads, your ribbons, your cardstock? Okay, I purchased all of mine from Stampin' Storage. On the blog post that will go live a few minutes after I'm done with this live, there is all of that information. Again, how do I, how do I teach you that? So all of that information will be on my blog post as well as how to get it. I do have an affiliate link, so you will see that information, um, which means that the company will pay me a small fee if you use my codes and my links and all of that. Another thing is, which I thought was precious, how do I have time to craft? Well, I call that organization you're going to have to make time to craft because once you make the time to craft and make a card and send it to someone, you're gonna be blessed and so will they. Another question you had was, how to keep track of the cards you've made? Well, multiple ways. You could take a picture of the card, write down the measurements, put it in a, um, an album, you know, in a binder, okay? Um, you find something on Pinterest and you're like, how do I, how do I save that? You can visit that person's blog. You can right click and download the picture, print it, put it in your binder. Okay. You're going to have to find what works best for you. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm so bad. It's like, oh, I'm trying to see what y'all are saying. Okay. I'm going to stay focused. Um, storage issues. Again, on my blog, I took pictures of underneath one of my cabinets to show you how I organize. I purchased um, like shoe boxes with lids from the container store. I label everything because when you're looking for something, you don't wanna be rummaging through. Okay, the next, the next topic is on ideas. Okay, we're gonna be flipping the camera back down. Um, I'm thinking we're gonna take right at an hour tonight, but hopefully not, okay. So, whoops, all right, there we go. You all wanted to know about how to find masculine cards, how to find this. Okay, Pinterest.com, Sharon Armstrong, saved. There is a tiny magnifying glass right there. You can search for anything you're looking for. Remember a while ago when I said that Google and Pinterest are the largest search engines. You can find anything you want. So when you end up on my Pinterest page, the first board you will see is all my pins. There's almost 13,000 of them. You can look for easy handmade cards. You can look for masculine cards, okay? I have my boards on Pinterest, and that way you know that you can go there and find what you're looking for. Another one is you can do the same little magnifying glass on my YouTube channel, which I thought I printed that, but I'm not seeing it. On my YouTube channel, there is a little tiny, and I mean, it's tiny. See that tiny little magnifying glass? You click on that and you can start typing what you're looking for. If you're looking for masculine cards here on YouTube, that's how you're gonna find it. So again, I'm talking about the best card making hacks tonight, but it's things that you guys are struggling with and this seemed to be a big one. You asked me about choosing colors, uh, which we talked about with the color chart that I shared with you. You asked me about basic designs, that's Pinterest. You asked me about angled fold, fun fold cards, that's Pinterest. You asked me about layouts and colors, Pinterest. Um, you asked me about building a scene, like using a particular stamp set or whatever, Pinterest. Okay, I think we've beat Pinterest down. Let's move on to ribbon. You had lots of questions about ribbon. You wanted to know how to tie a bow. You wanted to know how to tie a knot. Okay. First of all, I recommend, if you're struggling, try to find a, um, a ribbon that is at least a half an inch to give you something to um, hang on to, if you would. Um, when I'm just making a bow, like to maybe add to a card, 
You remember the old rabbit ears trick when we were learning to tie our shoes? That's what I do, okay? Now, we just talked about Pinterest. There are a million, whoops, I need a bigger tail. There are a million, million, I'm telling you, a lot of posts on Pinterest about tying specific things. If you're looking for a certain uh, bow for um, a certain project, there's so many things. And what I found interesting was they were all from overseas, but you can still see the pictures. So notice what I'm doing. I'm holding this in the middle and I'm pulling my loops to get them the size I want. And then I tighten it back up, okay? So this would be a bow that I would stick on a card, maybe with a glue dot, okay? When you're tying it actually on the card, it can be hard. So if you struggle with that, add your piece of ribbon, tie your bow this way, cut it, add it to the card. Okay, so we're gonna set that right there for right now. The other one that you said was you don't know how to tie a knot. So I have a clear block here and I've got this extra long for demonstration purposes. But if you will take whichever one you, um, however way you loop it. So this bottom one right here, we're going to loop it back and do the tying to tie our knot. We're gonna hold it and we're gonna pull this side. Can y'all see the perfect knot? Can you see that? Oh, I hope it shows up on the camera. But that's how you tie a knot, okay? Another one you said was, what else can I do with ribbon? So I added two pieces of designer series paper here and I don't like seeing the seam, okay? So what I like to do, where'd my adhesive go? <laughs> we have lost the adhesive. Found it, okay. So I like to take my ribbon and just give me a little bit of a tail on either side. Turn it over, add my adhesive to hold it. I sure hope that this video is helpful for you guys. I hope that it is, and I know you all are chatting amongst yourselves and you're helping each other and I love that. That's what's so great about the labs. Okay, so I have added my ribbon that way. So remember our bow that we talked about? If you struggle tying the bow on here, like this, if this is hard for you to tie it that way, there is nothing wrong with taking a glue dot and adding your bow that way. Y'all see that? Okay, all right. Oh, Cindy says her first Creative 8 retreat, she learned a lot about tying knots and bows. There you go. See, you could have taught this tonight, Cindy. <laughs> okay, so that's a ribbon. Um, okay, time for some stamping. I have a photopolymer stamp set and I have my paper piercing mat and I want to show you something. Whenever you're using a photopolymer stamp set, which is the clear, there is no rubber, there is no cushion between. So you need to supplement the cushion. This paper piercing mat is not in any Stampin' Up! catalog, but it is on my store. You can find it on the website. 
Um, if you need any help finding that, uh, of course, the website is listed below um, this video in the show more. So I'm going to get my stamp pad and we're going to do some inking. So I'm going to ink this up. This is the only stamping I think I've done on the tonight's live. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stamp. When you're stamping, hold that there for a few seconds. Let that ink have a chance to um, absorb in. So then you get a lovely image, okay? If you take away that paper piercing mat, you may not have the same results. It may be an okay image, but it's not gonna be the same. Does that make sense? You need that cushion of the paper piercing mat to help you with your images. Okay, we did that one. All right, you guys struggle with putting the labels on the stamps, okay? You know, and all of this kind of stuff is covered in my other videos, but tonight's video is one that you can refer back to. So I purposely did not mount all of this one. By the way, I take out this whole thing, I peel off the white paper, and I stick it there so I can tell when I'm missing a stamp. So the um, rubber stamps have a paper backing. You do need to take that off. And we're going to look for our image. This one is wishing you a beautiful day. I'm gonna turn it over. I'm going to peel back both pieces. And if you will take and just hover over it, check all the way around to make sure that you are completely in that area. Press down, peel it off. Now you will see that my label is perfectly matched to my sentiments. This seems to be a big struggle with you guys, okay? So again, we're gonna put this right back in here and we know that we're not missing any stamps. Okay, what else? Y'all need to come help me put all this stuff back. <laughs> um, we got the ribbon. Ah, embossing powders. Your question to me was, how do I know if I've heated it too long? Okay, well, we're gonna talk about first. This one was heated perfectly. This one was not heated completely. Can y'all see how it's dull right there? There is a chance that if I had enough, I did it enough to where I don't lose it, but that side is not heated completely. You want to make sure that you don't, that you, that everything is shining. Now, overheating it would mean you've probably burnt it, okay? So, the heat gun, when you're using embossing tools, um, you need a sticky ink to use an embossing powder, okay? First step. I'm using the Versamark ink. You wanna stamp, hold it for a few seconds. You wanna close up that ink because the powder and the Versamark will make a mess. All right, oh, Vay's gonna come help me put my mess away, I saw that. See, I have such FOMO, I'm missing out on what you guys are saying. That chat box is just going like crazy. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna move that over. And there are two ways to use a heat gun or there's two ways to emboss. I'm not gonna do the whole thing because it is loud. You can emboss from the top. There are two settings on the Stampin' Up! heat tool. One is a lower one, one is a higher one. The lower one is great for vellum or thin designer series paper so that it doesn't burn, okay? Now, you can... I'm actually gonna go low. You can heat from the top until you start seeing it get shiny. Do you see how I'm moving 
my embossing tool, my heat gun in circles, you want to keep it moving or you could burn your cardstock. The other way to do it is from underneath and then you get to watch the magic happen. Y'all see that? It's happening. There we go. I am using it on the lower setting so that you can hear me talk. But heating up embossing powder seemed to be a struggle for y'all. So I wanted to cover that. Everything is good and shiny. I can stop now. There is no reason to continue embossing. Okay, so we did that one. Let's say you get some of that embossing powder. Well, here's what I like to do. I like to tap this back in, but there's always residue either on my work surface, in that little holder, whether I'm using, whatever I'm using. Swiffer sheet cleans up all that embossing powder, especially on your work surface. It just picks it all up and you don't have that gritty feel on your work surface. Okay, so more stamping. You all asked about stamping straight. You're struggling with that. So, let me get this out. If you're struggling with that, I highly recommend you purchase the grid paper from Stampin' Up. You can find that on my website. So take your, and I'm just gonna flip this over, and I'm gonna put it down here in the lower left corner where you can see the measurements, okay? So if you want your sentiment to be about right here. Okay, first question y'all had was, how do you open the stamp pad? <laughs> Let's back up a bit. There's two ways. One, it's like a compact. You can open it that way. So you would open it up all the way, okay? To close it, push, pull, swing. If your ink pad does not open easily like that, try this. See how it just pops open? Then you can continue opening it and close it. You do want to have it closed when you're stamping because you could break that hinge and that would be bad. Okay, so I picked a sentiment stamp because that seemed to be y'all's struggle was stamping straight. Um, so you can see here where I was practicing. Always test, test your stamp. Is it on, is it on straight? Is it on crooked? Can y'all see that that's a little bit crooked? Okay. Use your grid paper to give a little bit of practice, okay? Then when you feel confident, come over here. You want to stamp straight down and lift straight up. Now, do you see how straight my sentiment is? Another thing is I stand up to stamp. That may be your challenge is that you are, I'm gonna leave that there because we're gonna do some more stamping. You may be sitting down and that may be why you're having trouble. I'm gonna bring in this stamp. So a lot of you said that you have, and this is from Comfort and Home, a lot of you said that you have, whoops, of course it didn't do it, a halo. If you are rocking your stamp, you're gonna get what we call a halo. That's a pretty bad halo to hide, but there is a chance you could. First of all, there is a sand and, sand and pencil eraser, an ink and pencil eraser that you can purchase on Amazon that you could try to use to get that off but that's a pretty deep one. So it's kind of hard. If you have just a little bit of a smudge like that, it works better on a smudge, okay? But when you have it that deep, that's pretty bad. So keep in mind, this is your stamp, okay? 
If you have a stamp and you can tell on my stamp, see how dark it is up at the top? This is your stamp. First, let's clean it before we do anything with it. wet. We're going to clean our stamp. Okay, so if you constantly have that problem, it could be that your stamp needs a little bit of trimming. You can take scissors and go along and trim that off. Okay? If it's a constant problem, there's a slight chance that it was a bit of a defect when it came from Stampin' Up. Let's go back to this again. First of all, our ink pads, the newer versions are very juicy. Tap, tap, tap. Try not to get so much ink on there. Stamp straight down, no wiggling, no, no no back and forth, and then lift straight up. And you won't have those halos anymore. Of course, this one I did trim, but I also inked up lightly, tap, 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 stamp straight down, lift straight up, okay? That is key to avoiding those halos. Okay, what else? the halos, we got the stamping straight, we got the open and closing our ink pads. Okay, so this is one that I wasn't quite sure of, and I probably should have replied back and asked a few of you, but let's go through it. Some of you talked about Scoring with the Take Your Pick tool. So first of all, the Stampin' Up! Uh, paper trimmer has, let's move this over, has a scoring blade. If yours fell out and you can't find it, you know you can't buy that. But you can call Stampin' Up! and they'll send you one for free. Okay? So the question that I got, or the, the questions that I got, is that you're struggling, let's just move all that out of the way, let's just pretend we don't have it. You're struggling with using the Take Your Pick tool to score. All right, so we want this at four and a quarter. There are two ends on the Take Your Pick tool for scoring. Use the skinnier one because the fatter one doesn't wanna go down into the groove, okay? Go back a couple of times and you will have your score mark. Oh, you can't see that on the video. Let's see. You'll have your score mark. There it is, okay? Another thing you can use if you're struggling with that is your um, bone folder. Same concept. We're gonna come in that groove, go back again just to make sure, and now we have our scoring. If that did not answer your question um, and you're watching or you're watching the replay, please comment and let me know. Um, I just, I wasn't quite sure of that, but I thought, well, we'll just run through it just in case. Now, scoring cardstock. My preferred method is the Simply Scored. But if you don't have this, and of course I dropped my stylus. There it is. It comes with a stylus, which is the same thing. You know, you can score with this, okay? They, they sell the Simply Scored at the time of this video. You never know when things are gonna retire, but this is another way to score your cardstock. Always make sure that everything is flush and, and up against. Don't let it be crooked or you will have a crooked score line. Okay. 
So I kind of jumped out a little bit. A lot of you know what the Stamparatus is, and a lot of you asked um, about using it. There are a ton of videos on YouTube, including mine, about using your Stamparatus. So I didn't want to go through too much of that tonight, but if you, like, if you're putting your stamp, let's just take this one right here. If you're putting your stamp way over here in the corner, I struggle with that. It's okay to bring it out some on your, on your cardstock. Let's just do this. Put that where you want it. Bring this in to catch it. By the way, this is one of those old uh, stamps that were not the cling mount, and I never put my labels on those. But you can move this paper out away from that corner if that's causing you trouble when you're trying to ink up your stamp. Okay. All right. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. I know, I know, I know. Wait. We're going to talk about undo. We're gonna talk about removing layers, getting layers straight when you're putting your cards together. So, Undo is a product that you can purchase. Unless you live in California, you can't buy this color brand. I think it has a green label in California. Um, but Undo is a great way to remove layers on your cards. So, first of all, I'm gonna push this aside. I've just got two layers of cardstock. Actually, I think I'm using this one. Yeah, we're gonna use this one. So I put it on really bad. That's really crooked, right? <laughs> but there, um, you could use undo, and you would just, of course, take off the top, put that underneath there, and, and just squirt a little bit, and it would remove it. The other thing you can use is the blade part of the Take Your Pick tool that has the paper piercer on one end. You can also use that. But wait till you see the other one I'm gonna tell you. So you just kind of slide that in, kind of pull, just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right, I'm gonna flip the camera around because you gotta see this. You, I just learned this myself, and you gotta see this. Did you know that your hot air We'll do the same thing. <laughs> I just learned that a couple of weeks ago from my downline, Ann Brown. I was like, well, I've got some hot air. I can surely do that. It works great. And I'm telling you, I put these layers together uh, this morning and I, what is it? Eight o'clock at night, my time now. And I just pulled it off with my hot air. <sighs> Brilliant. Okay, let's just see what else we have. Goodness gracious, guys. You know, I felt so bad because some of these struggles, I was like, well, I've done that on a video. Haven't they watched my video? No, let's just put them all on one video. Okay, let's make sure. Um, okay, changing back to the camera. You said that you... Um, have trouble getting your layers straight. So we're gonna put some adhesive. See, where's my, where's my silicone mat? We're gonna put some adhesive down. Ah, that was another one y'all said. My um, Seal Plus rips my cardstock. It does, because it's so strong. But again, if you will come up, see, I got lazy and I went down at an angle but if you will come straight up, it will stop doing that, okay? So to get your layer straight, hover over it. Can you see all around it? Don't let it touch yet until you're ready, okay? All right, I'm ready. All right, there we go. Again, I'm standing up. If some of you are having trouble with getting your layer straight, you might be sitting down. It might be the angle. So try standing up. Hovering over it, looking at your border all the way around, and place it. Okay? Oh, goodness. I'm looking. What else do I have? Oh, I do. I have one more. So, let's just say 
I'm gonna open up our ink pad. Look at all that ink on my hands. You would think, let's see if that will do it. Nope, it was dry enough. I'm gonna barely touch that. I've got inky fingers and I'm gonna touch my card. Can y'all see that? Let's back it up a little bit. It's not, it's not much, but it would be enough to ruin the project, okay? So first of all, I need to do some cleaning before I touch that white cardstock again. Oh, Patty's used her hair dryer on low. See, that would work too. Your heat gun would work too, but I was afraid to tell y'all that because I don't want anybody to get burned. Okay, so Stampin' Up! currently sells a white gel pen and the chalk. We've already talked about our eraser that we could use our ink and pen eraser to clean up those smudges. See, that works great on that. You can also take a chalk pen, the chalk marker, and try, see what it does. Okay, so I'm just tap, 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 tap. I find that on the white paper, sometimes it will not chew it up, but it leaves a, a, a mark on it. You can take the gel pen. I know y'all can't see my hand, sorry. You can take the gel pen and just dot, 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 and see if that helps. So depending on how bad your smear is, will depend on which one of these might save you and save your project. Huh, boy. Ah, oh, shoot. There we go. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I see you guys talking amongst yourselves about certain things. Um, the Tombow glue works the best when you're trying to get those layers lined up, especially when you have a very thin border. Some of you ask me, when is a card done? It just depends. Sometimes we keep adding to our card and adding to our card and we think, oh, what else does it need? Sometimes it doesn't need anymore. It's done, just like I'm done. <laughs> Man. Okay, there's 368 of you on here. It looks like I kept your attention for most of the time. So I appreciate you taking the time out of your evening, morning, wherever you're at in the world. I want to quickly look through here and see how we did. Um, okay, I'm just glancing through. I'm sure that Michelle was able to help you. Um, I'm seeing y'all talk about using the Tombow to give you some wiggle room. The Tombow is really good. And remember, like I showed you, just a skinny little line. You don't have to use a ton. It will stick. Um, um, close that. Okay, I see that I'm buffering. Am I buffering? There we go. Okay, so Mary Bray is asking about how to use the color lifter. I'm going to talk about the Stampin' Blends, the color lifter with the inks next Thursday night. It's not gonna be as long of a presentation. I just, I just couldn't do two hours tonight. I just, I felt like that was too long to have um, a, a, a live or a video. That's a long time. So there will be two videos that you will be able to save um, to help you with your um, card struggles. And, um, okay, I'm just glancing through here. I'm sure, they said she has a lot of hot air. <laughs> I did too, so I was like, I can do that. <laughs> um, yep, your heat emboss tool will get those layers apart. Um, but yeah, hot air, man. You don't have to turn the machine on. You can do it with your hot air. Okay, y'all are loving my tips. Helen says, this is a great presentation. Thank you so much. I so appreciate you all staying with me tonight, getting through all of these card struggles that you have and allowing me to share the best card making hacks with you that I could all in one presentation. If you're watching the replay, I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that you will comment. Let me know what struggles you have that I didn't cover tonight. Maybe I can squeeze those in next week. I can't promise. 
But yeah, I just wanted to put all of these tips and tricks and hacks all in one presentation um, to help you guys have one place, well, actually gonna have two places to refer to. So if you have more, uh, if you have questions or comments about ink pads, Memento, Stays On, Classic, um, Versamark, any of those, leave me a comment below this video and I will make sure that I cover that next Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Live. Okay. All right. Okay. You guys are loving it. Um, okay. And thank you so much, Michelle, for helping. I know tonight was a different YouTube Live, but it was a needed thing. You guys needed it. So um, thank you so much for uh, letting me know what your struggles were when I sent you the emails. And I hope that you all have a wonderful evening morning, day, wherever.